Welcome back, everyone, to another exciting edition of the Broker to Broker podcast. My name is Mark Summers. I am the president of AIM. Uh, once again, I know I sound like, uh, you know, just, just like I'm on repeat, but I'm extremely excited uh, about today's guest, uh, big in, in the mortgage industry. Um, if I'm not mistaken, has his own podcast. So today I'm going to be interviewing the broker owner of First West Financial, Enrique Braunschweiger. Thanks, Enrique, for joining us. Absolutely. How are you, Mark? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I think one of the things I put a sticker right in front of my computer says, dial it down. I get so excited about everything broker that I just, I get all worked up. So I have to dial it down. Constantly. Don't dial it down so here. No, you, remind me, okay, if I get a little too, too much, right? Hell no. You, you, we're not dialing <laughs> anything down today. We're going to, we're going to get going here. No, I'm really excited about this. Uh, Enrique, you've been a, a great supporter of AIM. We can't thank you enough for that. And, uh, you know, I think your story, the, the way you're going about your business, I think a lot of our members, uh, after listening to this today, will 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 be really, will benefit from it extremely. So let's just hop right into it. So, okay, give me your background. I want to know the history of you. I want to know how your company started. I want to, I, just give me the whole kit caboodle. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I actually have a background in hospitality. You know, I'm 56 years old, so I've been around the block a couple of times. I'm one of the seniors in the group, I suppose, right? Based on age. I've been in the mortgage business 18 years, but believe it or not, my background actually came from hospitality. Right before I started in doing mortgages, I was actually selling timeshares. I was a timeshare salesman, very successful timeshare salesman. I did really well, worked for some of the big names, you know, Marriott and, and Sheraton and so on. But I, honest to goodness, struggle with the whole process of having to do the sales presentations, you know, and I ended up uh, becoming a, a mortgage broker by mistake. I had an interview with Remax. I was going to go sell real estate because to sell timeshares, you have to have a license. And I was on my way to interview Remax and I, honest to goodness, walked into the wrong door and I walked into the next door. There was a mortgage broker and I ended up talking to Eduardo there. Next thing you know, I am slinging subprime loans for a couple of no years, way. you know, so and I never cool. made it to the realtor office. And, you know, I've been around ever since, but independent with my own company, we are going into our 15 year. We're very, very excited. We have a great group here. We have a branch up in Central Valley with an amazing leader up there, Daniel Sosa. And, you know, that's kind of what we do. And I've been part of Ames almost since day one. I was part of the original group where, you know, it was, uh, the the hotel thing right and with anthony casa and you know i i my career was pretty much stagnant at that point it was just me and my wife and coming coming on board with with brooks are better and aim and all of that really re, re got me started on the excitement of being a broker and you know i was actually contemplating what am i going to do for the rest of my life i don't want to do this and now i'm fully invested and i love being a broker i'm very very passionate about it uh, and I'm passionate about what AIM does. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I I sometimes get excited. I sometimes get upset because as a, someone who's been around longer, you know, we know what this is about. We know why this, this group started. We know that this isn't just some trade group so we can have conventions and have trade shows. There's, there's more to it. Um, and I know all about it. And sometimes I get excited because I see other people that are new that don't understand the big picture. So that's sort of like my story, but we, we love what we do. We're successful. We are excited about what we do and we love working with the partners that AIM has. There's just so much to it. So. Well, tell me, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, First West Financial. How many loan officers do you have, support staff? Give me a little, give me a little insight right. detail on that. So we have, including myself, I'm, I'm a producer. So I, I produce about you know big bulk of what we do. And I've been at it for a long, long time. I work with a lot of realtors locally and have a pretty large database. But I have uh, two additional loan officers here. I have two additional lo loan officers out of state. And then we have four loan officers in the Central Valley branch. Um, so we have a, a pretty good support staff. I have a full-time marketing director. I have a personal assistant. And we use contract processing for all of our all of our stuff, you know, and we have actually a lot of success using contract processing and uh, we align ourselves with, you know, with true partners. That's sort of our thing. We are very, very strong uh, minded about it. I'm very vocal about it and I have really good reason to be. So that's our thing. And we're, you know, we're busy. I would say probably right now, like everybody, we've been doing a lot of refis, but our foundation, both here and in Central Valley is purchases. That's our thing, you know, and we focus on serving the 
the community. We have a program called the Shining Star Hero Program that we started that actually allows us to work really have our, most of our marketing gears towards veterans, uh, first responders, nurses, educators, healthcare workers, uh, law enforcement. That's our marketing. You know, we have marketing with a purpose. So rather than just marketing to everybody, that's sort of a big part of our focus. And uh, it's worked out really well for us. No, that's awesome. No, I, I love the fact that whenever you're, whenever someone says, you know, veterans, first, first responders, I always, you know, I always kind of lean that way just because I know what they do. Um, but uh, no, I love the fact that you, you have different branches. I mean, you're, you're, you're going out. I, I absolutely love what you're doing here. So let's talk about this. So I know one of the things that we wanted to talk about here was your partnerships that you have. Right. So what is so kind of give me your philosophy on your partnerships. You're talking about like uh, my vendor partnerships. Is that what you're both. Let's, to? Let's, let's hop into it. Let's hop into it all. Actually, let's talk about your vendor partnerships first. Sure. Of course. Absolutely. So I, I believe that one of the advantages of being a broker is of course we have our independence, right? We can, come and go and we can move very swiftly from one lender to another. But one of the downsides we have is that we are asked to do everything, right? We have to be accountants. We have to be marketers. You know, when people sign up to be loan officers and you work for a retail company, well, they do everything for you, right? But then when you decide, hey, I'm going to go independent, I'm going to become a broker, suddenly you realize, wow, I need to know about accounting. I need to know about marketing. I need to know about uh, funnels. I need to know. Things that I didn't sign up for, now I'm required to step in. So I think it's so important that we line up with a right stack of partnerships, right? Uh, and AIM has made it very easy for us. And I know it sounds like a commercial, but I'm, I mean, for years we were on our own. I have to go out there and try to figure out, okay, who am I going to use for, for funnels? Or uh, what's a funnel, right? Or who's going to help me with a website? And now I have an opportunity that you guys are vetting all of these vendors, getting those discounts. So to me, that's a huge move. I absolutely love that. And I don't think it's said enough about how important that is. You know, for many years uh, with the other organizations, most of these partners is just someone, whoever wrote the biggest check gets to be the partner, right? And here, um, I know from personal experience that you guys go through the process and say, hey, is this a company that is pro broker? Is the broker going to benefit from this? So for us, using companies like Stickham, for example, giving us trigger leads when our customers run credit somewhere else, right? Or being able to do all of our tech stack in terms of funnels and, and all that with lead pops and working with Homebot and working with Verse, IO, and you know, just having these different groups that are really aligned with a broker, you know, and that really understand that I don't have the money to have a full marketing department. I don't have the money to hire a web developer just to develop my website or someone who can answer my my phone calls, my leads, or, or whatever it is, it makes us look very professional when we align with this company. That's why I love these partnerships, you know? And and I, I mean, just yesterday I woke up and I go, oh, now we can order cutting boards and we can order pre gifts, you know, and we can get a discount. So that that to me is, is very valuable as a broker because I come from the 10 years when I had to do this all on my own. Right. Many of the new brokers don't know what that is, right? They don't, they, we, we know what it's like to be out there and you, you're on your own. And every company you're trying to talk to, when you tell them you're a broker, they're like, ah, oh, you know, we don't work with brokers a lot, but let me see what I can do. And now it's like the tables are turned. Yeah. And I, you know, it's funny. I just literally right before I got here to do this podcast, um, I was just doing a presentation and I was telling people about, you know, the brokers are better network, you know, which is our vendor network. And I said, you know, if this was four years ago, five years, 10 years ago, and you wanted a website, what would you have done? You would have Googled, you would have vetted it out. You would have had to wait for everything to come through. And then guess what? You have 20 files back here. You got to take care of. And then it went by the wayside. You know what I mean? we right. have And you got to hire now. someone who doesn't know mortgages for starters. Right. Right. Now it's like, we go straight to the source, someone who's already vetted, someone who knows what they're doing. You, you pick fast, you, you, you implement very quickly. I think that's one of the big things as a broker is there's all these great ideas, right? How fast can you implement? The one that implements the fastest is the one that gets to the finish line the fastest. So for me, uh, I really need to go from, hey, we need a partner to help us with credit to let's do it in days, not months, right? We want to do it in days. So very important. Right. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. So, okay. So you have these vendor partnerships, right? Tell me how you think your borrowers benefit from you having these partnerships with them. Well, I, I think that what it basically does, and I know it's, a, it's maybe a long way around it, but the reality is that 
for many years, I'm in a small market. I'm in Southern California. I'm in an area called the Palm Springs area, the Palm Desert area. And even though it's a famous area, it's a small area. We're about 150 miles east of Los Angeles. Yeah. It's 120 degrees here in the summer. It's hot. So it stays very small. It's a small community. And I'm competing with the internet and I'm competing with a couple of bankers here locally that have deep pockets, right? Plus the Chases and the Wells Fargo. And one of the challenges I always had is that I was always, even though I'm a broker and I have, you know, good product and good follow-up, I always look like a small guy. And I look like a small guy because I didn't have the deep pockets to market the way I wanted, to be able to do the things I wanted to do, to be able to compete with these guys, right? Um, what some of these partners do is they allow me to elevate my game to where now here in the community, I'm one of the top guys, right? I'm competing alongside with these brokers, these bankers that have deep pockets. I'm competing with, you know, the Quicken and the Lending Tree and the Costco's because I'm able to stack the, the tools that I have. So my visibility with the customer is better. We already know that when someone chooses to do business with a broker, whether it's Enrique or Mark or, or Anthony and Philip, whatever it is, the moment they choose a broker, they're already better off because they're going to get a better deal. Whether they know it or not, they're already winning. Now we need to be able to say, you know, I am not only good enough, but I look good enough because it matters. It matters the way you look on the internet. It matters the, the technology that you have, right? The way, for example, that we're using Arrive, for example, right now, the speed, the efficiency, right? People can fill out the application and upload the documents. And all that. Three years ago, we had to use four different pieces of software just to accomplish that, right? Now, you know, for 80 bucks a month, I can look like Quicken does or some of the big guys. That's the advantage is that it allows us to look and market ourselves as a professional broker at a level that three, four years ago, it would have cost a lot of money to do that. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, no, it makes it makes it makes perfect sense. I mean, I've always said that the, the one thing that I think that separated like the retail divisions and those mega call centers compared to us was technology. One of the biggest things was technology and resources. And I think with our vendor network, we have not only bridged that gap, but we have surpassed it in my eyes. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, think about this. You're taking applications and processing customers or processing borrowers. Our technology, whether it's Arrive or LendingPad or some of the, some of the names we, we, we are associated with, in my case, it's Arrive. That technology is at par with whatever Quicken is going to send a customer in terms of application, in terms of follow-up paperwork, right? You look at marketing, you know, I, we have a partnership with Leap Pops, you know, and Andrew's done a phenomenal job where my funnels and the way I'm marketing is right there at par. Maybe I don't have the same amount of money to spread that marketing wider like some of the other guys do, but locally here in my market, I am forefront because I'm able to take some of those ads and funnels and things like that and put them up front and they look good and they look professional and they're done well. And I don't have to worry about the technical side of it. So that's the, that's the advantage too. Right. A lot of the stuff that we provide or that's provided for us, because I'm one of you as well, is it's a lot of hands off. You don't you don't have to be too deep into it. Right? So we can Fine. do what we do best, which is take care of the consumer. So absolutely. And Ricky, you, you brought up some some great partners that we have. What does take me from start to finish? What does your tech stack look like? Right. OK. So in terms of our internal side of it, we are using Arrive pretty much. We've turned over completely to Arrive. We were using Flowify and we were using Calix. I was one of the very first, first ones to jump in back into Arrive when the whole Calix thing went down just a, a couple months ago. Right. So we are all invested in, in, in working with Arrive and they're a great, great partner. They're able to help us pretty much manage our, our pipeline uh, correctly, right? I'm using a CRM that's not very, very popular. A lot of people don't know about it. They're not an AIM partner. They should be. And it's called Big Purple Dot. That's my okay. CRM. Uh, I signed up with Big Purple Dot probably about, about 10 years. So I have a huge database. And this database is managed by a full-time person that helps me with answering calls, managing the database, inputting everything. Every phone call that comes in, every lead that comes in, every referral that we have goes into the database. And Big Purple Dot is... Uh, uh, works really well with with um, with loan officers and brokers in particular. So we do that. In terms of our credit, we use one of the credit partners, but we're also working with Stick'em. And in fact, I'm the one who pushed Stick'em to come over and do this. This is a big changer. I mean, anybody that's listening to this that does not have a company 
that gives you trigger leads when your customers are running credit somewhere else, you're missing the point. I, I, I'm, I, I give you an example. I talked to a guy yesterday. I got the trigger lead who's running credit. So I called him up. And, hey, dude, what's going on? <laughs> what, what are you doing? He goes, you do refis? And I'm like, yeah, I do refis. You don't get the 27 emails a month I send you. Go, oh, no, I never check email. He says, I never check email. I said, people don't check email. So, but when it was time for a refi, it was easier for him to pick up the phone and call the other guy, right? So I got the trigger lead from Stickham, which I was able to call him up and call him out. And then now we're, we're talking about his refi. So they're helping us out a lot. And that's, that's a must. Everybody has to look into that because we complain that the customers are going somewhere else. The worry is what about the ones you don't know are going somewhere else? There's a ton of customers that you did loans for two years, three years, four years ago that you don't know. They're also going to help you with your, uh, with your EPO. If someone goes out and runs credit four or five months into buying a house, you need to know about that. You need to call them up, right? Find out what's going on. Um, in terms of uh, uh, marketing, I have the package of Leadbob's HomeBot, uh, Verse.io. So I run ads through Leadbob's. I put a lead, I put a funnel on everything I put on the internet. That's a big thing for me. Is that if I put a post and I don't put a funnel, then I'm missing something, right? So I'm using that. Uh, I have Verse.io answer a lot of the calls for me and, and do a lot of that uh, engagement. And of course, HomeBot has been a great partner because it, yeah. it's an additional layer to communicate with the past client database. So that's sort of kind of like the basics of how everything looks for me right now. <laughs> Your, yours and mine are pretty much stacked pretty darn similar. Right. Yeah, I, mean, I, right. I, I think HomeBot for me personally was a game changer. Because yeah. every Monday morning, what I do is I wake up and I look to see who has the most activity in my feed. Right. Call them. It's it's easy. Yeah. It's actually absolutely, easy. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it makes a big difference. So yeah, yeah. And thanks for pushing stick them. That's uh, yeah. Well, they, they do they do a great job, you know. And they they're actually now coming up with some new things where they're going to be able to allow you to send video and do other stuff. So they really are at the forefront, and and they're and they're broken broker driven. So they they understand our model, and they understand that. You know, we're trying to save our customers from going somewhere else, you know, and they get that. So perfect. All right. So now one of the big things here and that we've been pushing as well is is marketing. You know, I mean, this refi boom, we keep saying it's going to come to an end. It's got to come to an end at some point. I mean, where it's just maybe this week, well, right? <laughs> maybe this week, I don't know, it keeps going up, uh, you know, with all this low hanging fruit. So, you know, we tell people to market. You got to market, you know, you got to market yourself. You got to market what you do in your community. Tell me about you because you have your own marketing team, don't you? That's correct. Well, yes, we do. We, we're very marketing driven. You know, we we spend a lot of time, a lot of effort and a lot of money marketing. Um, a good chunk of what we do is we market to our database. So I'll tell you briefly about this. I am a huge believer in marketing to your database. It still baffles me that there are uh, loan officers, brokers who have been in the business five, six, seven years and that they're not consistently marketing to their existing clients. Not only because of the refi. Yeah, you want to do refi. But all of these people know someone who's going to purchase a house, right? Someone or maybe themselves are going to sell and buy a home. So when we talk about marketing to your past clients, of course, you want to pick up those refis, you know, and even at three and a quarter, you're still going to have an opportunity with cash outs and debt consolidation and all that. So one of the things we do is we, we market heavily, heavily to the database. I'm very fortunate that I have a 15 year history here and I've saved every name and every phone number. We market aggressively through video, uh, messages, uh, and email, and we're constantly staying in touch with the database. and And it's purposeful, right? We don't. I'm not a big fan of sending those recipes and football calendars. I'm really about educating them, talking about credit, talking about taxes, talking about why it's important to look at your mortgage statement or insurance, and how can we help you. So we're always trying to bring value to the past clients, and we're always mentioning that you know someone who wants to buy a house, send them to us. So. Marketing to the database, it's big. Uh, in terms of marketing the community, what I've decided, what I've learned is I market a lot through my personal social media presence, right? So even though I have a business page, the money is in the personal page. Everybody that is making money on Facebook understands that. And I see still a lot of brokers that are putting all of their marbles in their business page. And I tell them, nobody's watching the business page. Everybody's looking at your personal page because they're your friends, right? So growing the personal aspect of both Instagram, 
Instagram and Facebook is extremely important. Once that's established and you have a strong presence, we market heavily. We focus on, uh, you know, organic content. Uh, our Shining Star Hero program is pretty big. That's we spend quite a bit of time working on that. That's something we share with with uh, with the community a lot. And one of the things that I do is I take these programs and I partner up with my realtors to encourage them to also promote the same thing, especially the Shining Star Hero program where we're marketing to the veterans and the first responders. And we tell realtors, hey, let's do this together. That's how we've been able to establish our purchase businesses. We get those partnerships. Um, and we do some, we do quite a bit of, uh, of paid advertising, you know, but we try to stay close to the community um, radius around here. So we are doing purchase and refinance ads, both through lead pops and ourselves. We have our own organic team that's putting stuff out there constantly we're, and we're experimenting we're all this is always a moving target you know yeah. facebook's always a moving target so you're constantly trying new things sometimes video works sometimes work sometimes graphics but we're constantly marketing to the local community that's really my focus that's awesome and how many people are on this marketing team well i have a couple of people um i, I have a full-time marketing director who basically manages all of our all of our presence, everything from website to uh, lead pops to Facebook, Instagram, and of course, uh, the Shining Star Hero program. I have a full-time videographer, someone who's full-time working for us. He's overseas. We ended up hiring one of these guys that you find on Fiverr. He turned out to be a great guy. We we ended up hiring him full-time. He's an employee of our company, and uh, he's been with us now three years. And he does all of our uh, editing. So he helps us with everything that is video related. We put out a lot of video content. Um, I, I, I always give uh, Ryan Eller a hard time because he does such a good job with it, but he he likes to edit his own videos. And I'm like, I wouldn't even know how to do that. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I can't do that. that. <laughs> I, I, no, I don't, need, I don't even have editing software. So I just pass it on to Gary and he's, uh, he's overseas and he does a phenomenal job. And, uh, I think that as a small company, these two people, even though it's an investment, right? It has been a game changer for us. That's how we've been able to grow is that we have someone that is consistent. Um, oh, just a note here, you, you look at loan officers. We talked about the fact that we're busy, right? We're being pulled in every direction. One of the dreams that we have as brokers or loan officers that we think, hey, I'm gonna be able to post, I'm gonna be able to do all these things. It's difficult. The name of the game on social media is consistency. It doesn't matter if you have great content, it has to be consistent, it has to be daily, twice a day, four times a day. That's the problem we have is we have great ideas, great content, we have a great camera, maybe we have a great editor, but because we're trying to do it ourselves, we fall short on being consistent. That's the reason why I decided to hire people to help me with this is because they take the consistency. You know, I look at my feed. The other day I was looking, just looking at my page and I go, man, this is amazing. I'm, I do a great job. And I'm like, I do nothing, right? I don't do anything. I, I come in every other Saturday and record 22, 23 videos all in, all in a row. And then I pass them on and I forget about it. And someone else is doing all the stuff, posting it for me. The consistency is pretty scary. I mean, three, four, five posts a day it has a huge impact in my business, right? One post a day, the internet is so busy right now. People have such a short span, they, they, they miss you, right? So we have to stay in front of them a lot. I also have, I forgot, I have my daughter, my 19 year old college student actually does all of the humble bragging posts and the shout outs to realtors. So that's been also a big thing. And, you know, I was, I got to give her money anyway, might as well have her do some work for me. So. <laughs> She's still on the payroll, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's another thing too. Is like some some of the people listening to this, they may they say, "Well, I can't go hire a full time marketer." I said, "Well, maybe you can hire a college student that can help you post consistently. You know, get get put them in charge of uh, Homebot, put them in charge of you know your social media, and have them hey start posting daily, right? Posting twice a day. It doesn't cost a lot of money to do that. It's going to be a game changer. People who are fit, who are sour about the internet, say, "Oh, yeah, no, Facebook doesn't work." is because they are not consistent. That's just the key of it. So you would say when it boils down to it, if you had to give advice to, to someone who is going to, you know, buckle up and, okay, I'm going on social media, you would say your philosophy is consistency and multiple times a day? 
Yeah, I think so. I think so. You know, everybody talks about Gary Vee and, he, you know, everybody either loves or hates Gary Vee. And people talk about how Gary Vee changed the game. And I want to tell you how he changed my game. When I read one of his books and when he said, look, if you're not posting three, four, five times a day, you're missing the whole boat. And, and the picture is a picture of a river that has water and it's running right at a certain speed. And you throw up a, a piece of wood into the river and that it's gone, right? And it passes by. That's the way the Facebook feed is. If I posted something this morning, Mark, and you happen to be on a podcast busy and then you go to an appointment and then you go see the dentist, by the time you come back at three o'clock and you go on Facebook, you're never going to see my post. That post is gone. And it was a good post, but you didn't see it. But you're going to be in at three that you may get my second or third post of the day. So one of the myths is that people think that, hey, I'm posting every other day once, and that, that gives me a presence. Well, when a customer or when an observer or when someone on the internet has a small feed, yeah, but when they have a busy feed like I do, man, if, you, if you're not posting several times, I'm going to miss you. Right. You know, something that posted yesterday, I've sometimes missed posts from Brooks are better from yesterday because I wasn't on the internet for five or six hours, you know, and I go, hey, I missed this. And I miss it because it's moving fast like a river. So yeah, three, that's what Gary says. You know, Gary talks about 12, 15 times a day. You know, I, I know that's kind of overkill for a lot of people, but it seems to be working for the guy, right? He knows what he's talking about. For me, it's about three to four times a day uh, when I can, sometimes a little more, but never less than three or four times a day for me. That's that's awesome. No, I, I love that. The the consistency side of it and, and posting multiple times. You the, the analogy that you used about that running river is awesome. Like it that that resonates with me. Yeah, because if it moves fast, you know, if you miss it, you're never gonna see that 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 piece of uh, information again. Yeah. So that's that's awesome. Okay, so you offer some service to brokers, don't you? I do, I do. I, I've been talking about my Shiny Star Hero program, and I don't I don't want to turn it into a commercial, but the reality is that we as brokers, one of the biggest struggles we have is how do we connect with realtors? How do we connect with agents, right? And if you didn't wake up this morning wondering whether you have more purchase, whether you need more purchase business or not, then you are missing the boat because all you have to do is go look at MBS Highway, look at the last five days and know that, hey, refis are going to eventually slow down. And we're all going to shift to purchases, except those people that are already in the purchase uh, area. What the Shannon Zero Hero program does is it allows us to connect with realtors and offer a service where we say, hey, let's market together to the heroes in the community. So what we did is we created graphics, we created videos, we did all the marketing and it's all packaged together and it's a subscription and people sign up for it. And what they do is they, every day we feed them coaching and we feed them the, the postings that they have to do on the internet. And so they're marketing to heroes, they're marketing to nurses, they're marketing with really high quality stuff done for you. They just all have to do is copy and paste. And the big key is you use those materials to approach realtors. So rather than calling a realtor and saying, hey, uh, I have great rates. Well, <laughs> everyone's got great rates. Or, hey, I have great turn times. Well, anybody that's using UWM or HomePoint has turn times, right? You have to be able to offer more value. And that's what we do is, hey, we want to be able to market to the heroes in the community. Are you interested in marketing with me? And the marketing is already all done. So all they have to do is just post it on their feed. And what we're learning is that these realtors are not only sending the heroes, but they're sending the rest of their business to me, right? So you pick up a realtor that may only do three or four loans to teachers and heroes, but they're doing another 10, 12 loans that they're sending somewhere else. This is an opportunity for you to capture that business because now you have something of value to share with them rather than just, you know, I brought you a cookie or I have great rates or I have great turn times. We all do. Yeah. What's going to separate yourself? And that's what I always say. Yeah. Especially these times we got to start thinking, I mean, you don't have to be so dramatic about it, but we got to start thinking outside the box a bit here. Exactly. Exactly. If people want to find out more about it, just drop me a line or send me a DM and I'll tell you, I, we do this primarily. I mean, I, I'm, I'm fortunate, you know, that uh, we have a pretty big pipeline and we're busy. We've been at it for a long time. My wife and I always talk about well, why, do we, why do we do this hero program? Well, I started doing it for myself and my loan officers. So my loan officers get it for free. We offered it to other people because we started getting requests from people say, hey, how do you do this? And so we, we actually, it's a break-even proposition for us. We just do it so other people can have the materials. And I have a passion for it. Uh, it's never, ever, ever going to stop. I mean, it, 
one loan or two a month covers what I make out of that thing. So for me, it's really about, you know, encouraging brokers, helping them out and uh, giving them some tools that they can use to get realtors. So that's what's about. See, that's why you're the man right there. Just, just for the mere fact of you're helping the broker community. I absolutely love that. And that's what this, this is all about is kind of supporting each other. And you're definitely doing that. You know what? It's been, it's been, I, I got the help, you know, I, for many years I was on my own and this is one of the, maybe this is my, my, the last thing I want to share with people, you know, is that I, for many years I was on my own. You know, I, my career, even though I was making good money, you know, I mean, you don't have to fund a lot of loans to make a six figure income in this business, right? You can work from home and do a few loans. But the reality is I was not excited about it. When, um, when the group was formed years ago and we started unifying for a cause and then it became AIM, that's when my my outlook changed. And I realized that, you know, as a broker, I have more opportunities that broker is not a dirty word anymore. You know, that I'm not a second class loan officer because I'm a broker, that I'm top tier. I'm better than most. I'm better than anybody, right? That I can compete in price and speed. So for me, that's extremely important. And I'm very protective of that. I'm very protective of that. I know that wholesale lenders out there, there are two kinds. The ones that are waking up every day, trying to figure out how are they going to help me get better. And the ones that are trying to figure out how they're going to get in front of the customer before I even meet these people. And I think part of the challenge we have with our narrative is that you think, and people say, well, you know, they're taking your customers or if you send them a loan, they're gonna now make them there. Maybe that narrative is old. Maybe they're not doing that anymore, but I'll tell you what they're doing. Every dollar that I put in their pocket is being used to run Super Bowl ads, gas station ads, partnerships with insurance companies. They're doing everything they can to get in front of my customer before I even get to know that customer exists. Right. That's the problem. So, oh, I'm not losing business to them. Yeah, you're right. You're not sophisticated enough to know you're losing business to them. <laughs> right. You're not smart right. enough to know that they're so fast, they actually get to the customer before you even meet the customer, right? You never get a shot at them. You never even get a shot at these people. So I have to be protective of the fact that as a broker, I have to wake up every day and not only take care of my customers, but also expand my customer base. And in order to do that, I have to partner with people who have their best interest, my best interest in mind. You know, yeah, they're here to make money. Yeah, of course they are. They are. They want to get rich, of course. But there's a way about it, right? Just like us, there's a way about it. And I think that that's why it's so important that we are educated about what a true partnership is and why is it that AIM was formed and why is it that it exists, right? Yes, all these other things are pluses, but the main reason is we have to help brokers stay in business and grow and protect the broker from the person that is trying to get in front of them. It's just that simple for me. Yeah, that you're, you're absolutely right on that in terms of yeah, so we called out a lot of lenders, you know, for wholesale lending. Of course. And now they say, oh, we don't do it anymore. You just think that they dropped all of that business and all of a sudden, like, oh, they're still, you know, multi-billion dollar. No, they're just like you said, they're attacking it in a different way. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I had this conversation with Todd Bitter the other day because I do, a, I work with a lot of Redfin agents and he, so does he. That's the big part of his business. And he's been very helpful to me on how do I ex expand in that business. And one thing that Redfin buyers have in common, they're internet savvy. That's why they're talking to Redfin. I would say that 40% of them, when I talk to them, the Redfin agent sends them to me. They said, oh, I'm already approved. And they tell me the name of who they're approved with. We know who that is, right? And it baffles me that 30, 40% of them already come approved with that company. And we obviously explain to them and say, hey, look, you're going to make an offer. You need to have a local pro There's reasons why you want to do business with us. And of course, pricing and, and points. But the reality is that when we say to ourselves, I'm not losing business to those guys, or I'm not worried about it because those guys are not taking my customer. You're dreaming. Right. <laughs> People are calling every single day and getting approved and they never even get to know who you are because you're not on the gas station and you're not on the Super Bowl and you're not on every magazine and you're not on the mailers for American Express and you're not on the mailers for, you know, State Farm. We have to be aware of that. And that to me, that's the big concern. It isn't about hating on people or, Putting people down is about making sure that you understand that your business, every single day, someone out there is trying to put you down. Someone's trying to undercut you, right? And you have to be smart about it. You have to be smart about where you put your dollars and who you partner with. Don't let brokers go the way of the travel agent, right? That's gold right there. 
All right. So I got I, I got a few more minutes of time here for you, and then I, I'm gonna let you go because I know you're a busy man as well. But tell me the advice that you would give to an upcoming broker. The stage is yours. You're at Fuse, and you get to give one piece of advice out to the community. What would it be? Well, I, I'll be honest with you. I think mentorship is super important, right? One of the things that to me helped me a lot in my career is that uh, halfway through when I was struggling as a broker and I was you know, funding two or three loans a month and I was trying to figure out, okay, how do I get to the next level? I realized that the knowledge that got me here is not going to get me to the next level. The technology that got me here is not going to get me to the next level the systems that I have are not going to get me to the next level. Just like now. I mean, I'm doing, personally, I'm doing 25, 30 loans a month. If I want to get to 60, I got to do things different. What I'm doing is not going to get me to 60, right? So I went to a mentor. I ended up actually working with the with a group. I was working with Carl White and the Mortgage Marketing Animals. And at the time, they were very valuable to me. They are the ones who actually helped me and mentor me into the next level. I would encourage people to look into mentorship, whether it's just another loan officer that you can spend an hour every couple of weeks talking about your system, talking about what you're doing, maybe hiring a coach if you can afford it, right? Uh, there are some great partners with AIM that do coaching. Um, but if anything, just connect with someone. I know I work with a couple of uh, loan officers that reach out to me every couple of weeks and they say, hey, I need to run this by you. I'm thinking about hiring someone or, hey, I need some help with this technology issue. And I love talking to them. Uh, I think mentorship is crucial. If I was to give someone a piece of advice, it's like instead of getting into every direction, is talk to someone who has been through the process, who has been around more than a couple of years. You know, there's a lot of great brokers that are doing a great job, but they're new. And there's brokers that are doing solid work that are seven, eight, 10, 12 years into the business. And we need to tap into that knowledge and into that experience. But if you can figure out a way to hire a coach, if you can figure out a way to hire someone or talk to someone that can give you solid direction, there's some great resources out there. That's what's get the game changer for me. And to this day, you know, until just a couple of months ago, my, my coach was actually hired by a company, but I've always had someone coaching me through the process. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, AIM has not only vendors that, that have coaching, we came out with a mentorship program. And if none of those work for you, I know we're all on the internet. You see someone like Enrique and you feel like you can connect with them. That's the cool thing about our community. Just call them, direct message them. Everyone yeah, absolutely. Them. I, I, I can tell you, if somebody goes on Brokes Are Better and puts a post and say, hey, I'm new, I need some help. Can someone spend 30 minutes on the phone with me? I will bet you my next closing that you'll get five, six people that will reply and say, hey, call me, here's my number. I bet you $10 that it'll do that. But the reality is that we're shy. We, we don't wanna come across like, like, we, like we need help. You know, Everybody needs coaching, right? At its best, Tiger Woods was being coached, right? The top basketball players are being coached. Every person that won a gold medal in the Olympics got a coach, right? Or a mentor of some kind. I do, right? And I have to have that because I need to be able to elevate myself to the next level. And it's super, super important. That's awesome. Enrique, this, this, uh, this, this podcast was really informative. Uh, it was absolutely awesome. I, I appreciate your time. I really do. I know a lot of people are going to get a lot of value out of this, uh, out of this show that we had today. Absolutely. And thank you so much. And I'm sorry about the low energy. I know I don't bring a lot of that to the table sometimes, but you're great. You're great. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to go out and get some caffeine now. So you don't want to see me after two cups. So. I kind of do actually, but uh, uh, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for your time and uh, absolutely, us. man. You guys keep okay. up the good work, and thanks for having a platform for us, and we appreciate it. Oh, it's 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 what we're passionate about, so it's easy to do in that sense. So thank you for everything. And brokers, absolutely. if you want to, if brokers, if you want to get caught up on all of our past podcast episodes, please head over to aimgroup.com backslash broker to broker. You can also listen to all of the Broker to Broker podcast episodes on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Please rate, rate our podcast, leave a review, subscribe to it, listen. Um, it helps us get the word out there and spreads the word that brokers are better. Enrique, you're, you're a perfect example of that. Thank you.